Sayın Baş Esteemed President, Venerable Heads of State and Government, Honorable Secretary General, Distinguished Delegates, on behalf of myself and my nation, I would like to wholeheartedly greet you. I wish that the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly will be beneficial for our countries and the entire human race. I'm very pleased to be at the General Assembly again after two years to address you because as the humanity in the last two years we've really been through painful times. We have lost 4.6 million people including our friends, relatives and loved ones during the COVID-19 pandemic, which was labeled as the biggest health crisis of the last century. Despite all the efforts displayed and the progress we've made in vaccination, we still witness the continuation of the negative ramifications of the pandemic. In such a climate that we are observing the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly, And I do believe that the messages of solidarity and cooperation which we will be conveying here will not only support the fight against the pandemic, but also increase the hopes of billions of people who are going through very challenging times. Our General Assembly needs to be strengthened so that the international community can contribute more effectively to the solution of global problems. And I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to Mr. Volkan Bosker, President of the 75th General Assembly, for his fruitful work towards that direction. And I do believe that Mr. Abdullah Shahid, who recently assumed the presidency of the 76th General Assembly, will carry the flag forward to greater heights. And as Turkey we will continue to fulfill our responsibilities so that the General Assembly can carry out its activities in the most efficient way. On this occasion, I also would like to congratulate Mr. Guterres, who once again assumed the duty of United Nations Secretary General and wish him continued success. It's extremely fitting that this year's General Assembly has been organized under the theme Building Resilience Through Hope. First of all, I would like to express one fact, no matter how painful it might be to hear. Unfortunately, we were reminded once again during this pandemic that the entire world are a part of a big family. But the solidarity test that we were put to failed us miserably. Especially the underdeveloped countries and poor segments of the societies were literally left to their fate in the face of the pandemic. The distorted structure of the global system, which rather creates problems instead of solutions, deepens those problems and condemns them to insolvency, also holds its share in the increased loss of lives around the world. At a time when millions of people have lost their lives and tens of millions of people are suffering in the grip of the virus, it is a disgrace for humanity that the vaccine nationalism is still being carried on through different methods. It's clear that a global disaster such as the COVID-19 pandemic can only be overcome through international cooperation and solidarity. It's not possible for any country to survive safely on its own before all countries are free from this pandemic. We hope that the will which we will be showcased in the General Assembly will constitute a turning point in understanding this fact for what it is. In addition to the importance of global cooperation during the pandemic, we had the opportunity to observe the high level that medical science has achieved. We took pride in the fact that the first vaccine approved by the WHO has been developed by two scientists of Turkish origin living in Germany. We, as Turkey, 
have tried to share the capabilities at our disposal with our friends and brothers and sisters around the world from day one, which complies with our belief, which is basically let the people live so that the state can live. While providing, on the one hand, the best health care services to our citizens, we also sent medical aid to 159 countries and 12 international organizations. On this occasion, I would like to inform you that we will, of, we will offer in the near future our national vaccine called Turkovac to the benefit of all humanity together with our nation. We support the initiatives towards strengthening the World Health Organization and preparing a convention against pandemics. We also emphasize, in particular, that a reasonable balance should be established between the protection of public health and the continuation of social and economic life. Distinguished delegates, the events that we've witnessed remind us some of the realities once again. Our joys, like our sorrows, our sufferings, like our achievements, and our problems, like the solutions, are all common. When somebody acts with a fait accompli logic, the entire humanity would pay the bill, not just the major countries. We witnessed, lastly, in Afghanistan, in a very painful way, that the problems cannot be solved by imposing methods that do not take into account the realities and the social fabric on the ground or in the field. The people of Afghanistan have been left alone. They were abandoned with the consequences of instability and the conflicts that have lasted for more than four decades. Regardless of the political process, Afghanistan needs the help and solidarity of the international community. We hope that peace, stability and security will be established in the country as soon as possible and that, they, and that the Afghan people will find relief. And as Turkey, we will continue to fulfill our fraternal duty towards the Afghan people during their difficult days. Ten years have gone by in the humanitarian drama in Syria, which caused the death of hundreds of thousands of people and the displacement of millions of people before the eyes of the whole world. While our country embraces close to four million Syrians, we are also battling on the ground terrorist organizations that have drowned the region in blood and tears. We are the only NATO ally which has fought Daesh, Korakor, and defeated this terrorist organization. Again, with our presence on the ground, we were able to stop the massacres and ethnic cleansing activities, atrocities committed by the PKK terrorist organization's extensions in Syria. As a result of our efforts and at the expense of our martyrs, we were able to ensure the voluntary return of 462,000 Syrians to the areas where we provided security. In a similar way, thanks to our footprint in Idlib, we've saved the lives of millions of people and prevented them from being displaced. The international community cannot allow the Syrian crisis to linger on for another 10 years. We need to display a stronger will to find a political solution to the problem based on the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2254 and in a way that will meet the expectations of the Syrian people. We welcome the extension of the United Nations Humanitarian Assistance Mechanism, which is delivered to the northwest of Syria via Turkey for yet another 12 months. We hope that the consul consolatory approach displayed on this issue will also be emulated in order to bring forward the political process and ensure the voluntary, safe and dignified return of the asylum seekers. I would like to once again reiterate in your presence that making any distinction between the terrorist organizations in the region and using them as subcontractors in the field is unacceptable. 
acts of terrorism in different countries around the world over the past 10 years have shown that terrorism is not only our common enemy, but that of the entire mankind. Our struggle against terrorist organizations that threaten the territorial integrity of Syria and, other, and our national security will continue with resolve. In our country, with the exception of the Syrians, there are also migrants under various statuses, the number of which currently exceeds one million. Because of, because of the current developments in Afghanistan, we are faced with the possibility of an another influx of migrants from this country. As a country that saved human dignity in the Syrian crisis, we no longer have the potential nor the capability to absorb new immigration way, influxes. On the basis of fair burden and responsibility sharing, it is high time for all the stakeholders to do their part on this issue. A concrete attitude now needs to be displayed against those who erode the 1951 Geneva Convention and the international humanitarian law. Distinguished delegates, thanks to our strong support for international legitimacy in Libya, a ceasefire was declared and then the Presidential Council and the National Unity Government were formed. We will continue to support the efforts of the National Unity Government to provide public services and unify all institutions and organize elections in a timely manner. I reiterate my call to the international community to stand by the legitimate government which represents all regions of Libya. One of the most important problems that fuels instability and threatens peace and security in our region is the Israeli and Palestinian conflict. As long as the persecution of the Palestinian people continues, lasting peace and stability in the Middle East is not possible. For this reason, invasion, annexation and illegal settlement policies must absolutely and immediately be brought to an end. We will continue to stand up against the violation of the international status of Jerusalem, which is based on the United Nations Resolution of 1947, and against violations of the sanctity of the Haram al-Sharif and of the rights of the Palestinian people. The peace process and the vision of a two-state solution must be revived without further delay. The establishment of an independent and contiguous Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital on the basis of the 1967 borders remain amongst our primary objectives. Important steps have been taken forward vis-à-vis -vis establishing stability in the Caucasus. By exercising its right of self-defense Azerbaijan has ended the invasion of its own territory, which has been the subject of Security Council resolutions which were not implemented for many years. This development has also enabled the opening of a new horizon ahead of us for opportunities to be explored in the region to establish a lasting and a sustainable peace. We are determined to support every positive step forward that will be taken by the parties involved.